All right. Uh, our guests are here because they've got an amazing program that it, they've been doing this for quite a while at the Ed Asner Family Center. And um, it's remarkable. I've, I haven't you know, I don't get to go to the class, but I hear about it from a lot of different people. And it's absolutely one of the greatest things going. The program is called The Dating Spectrum. So we're welcoming to the show. We've had them both on before, both. I don't know if we've had them on together, but we definitely have had them on separately. Tom Island, who is one of my favorite people on the planet. He is an amazing uh, person in amazing speaker, an amazing coach. Uh, you can see on his uh, name tag there, it says, Come to Life Coaching. He and his mom wrote an amazing book and workbook that if you have teens and preteens or adults, I really want to encourage you to check it out, uh, Come to Life. And of course, Chris Assad. Chris, you're going to have to forgive me if I'm saying your name wrong, because I, I said, how often do I say your last name? But uh, I know. this is <laughs> is it right? Am I just say my first name and that's it. I'm good. Um, How do you say your last name? Sod. So so I'm 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 getting close. Anyway, you are an amazing LMFT. You are the person who is making all those wonderful counseling things happen at the Ed Asner Family Center. We just are amazed with all the inroads that you have made in this area over the last few years. It's really super important. Um, are you at the center right now? Is that what I hear in the background? No, I believe that's Tom. It's me. Oh, where are you, Tom? You're coming to us from the road. I am. In fact, let me move over here. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, we can hear me. You're on the move. He's he's going places. To a, uh, to a better spot. How's this? There, there we go. So, All where right. are you in the world right now, Carmen Miranda? I am, I'm at uh, Arterial Coffee in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm on my way to run in an Ironman triathlon about two hours south of here in Cambridge, Maryland. So, I am living the good life and coming to life yeah. and look, looking to really make a difference by actually living Live in the dream. In it. Did you say triathlon? Is that what you're doing? An Ironman triathlon. That's why I'm yeah. shooting for on Saturday. That's craziness, Tom. Congratulations. <laughs> I know you're going to be able to do it. If not this time, another time. It's amazing. Like that's yeah. crazy. They call you know, it Ironman I, for a reason. <laughs> I have to say, I'm just so impressed with Tom because he not only talks about what people, you know, gives advice, coaching, and sort of helps people find their goals. But he also talks about his own life. He's actually living it and doing it. He's not just talking about it. Yeah. He, this, this man has so much energy. He just, he's like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, he's young. You know, <laughs> he can do that. He's I'm, I'm, young. I'm getting older, but I am getting older. Yeah, well, we all are, Tom. But, but you, are still, you are still very young. Okay, so let's break this down for people. First of all, uh, Chris, I want you to talk just a little bit about the amazing Ed Asner Family Center in case we have viewers that are new to the program. And because a big part of the dream was to have the counseling component. So talk a little yes. bit about that. Yes, absolutely. We, um, we started, our, Matt and Nava, uh, the co-founders of the center, um, just started talking about things that they really wanted to um, achieve and goals and things they wanted to provide for the community. And it became, after so much plotting and planning, it became realized around 2017. So we've been around for a while. It's just that we had a little bit of a pause during COVID, but we um, had some ups and downs just like everybody else, but we are full strength and moving forward 100%. And um, we, one of the biggest goals was for Nava's dream was to start um, mental health support and wellness for um, the special needs, families, community, uh, people, individuals, grandparents, siblings. You know, we really wanted to support everybody uh, through our work at the Ed Asner Family Center. So not only do we have mental health and wellness, we have really fun programs for the whole community, um, uh, mixers for uh, like dance nights. I mean, pre-COVID, we really had so many things going on. I mean, our last huge event was uh, like a Valentine's Day prom uh, that was in February before the shutdown. We had like almost 200 people at a sensory friendly event. And um, it was really a wonderful experience. 
but we have so many wonderful programs at the center. And uh, a couple of those is why we're here today for me and Tom to talk about and, and really promote. Um, but, uh, you know, at, at the center, we have five uh, clinicians that have been really um, uh, trained and uh, experienced in working with individuals on the spectrum or their families. So we really have um, a lot of knowledge and, uh, you know, experience in, in working with uh, people and families affected by autism. So... Absolutely. But I also want to say, and part of the reason why we want to be very particular about saying that the name of the program is the dating spectrum. Yes. Um, is because the Ed Asner San Center, as you, uh, Family Center, as you just said, it isn't just about autism. It, you know, you're, you're very welcoming of anyone with special needs in the family. So, and, it, and you welcome the entire family and we want to make sure, cause I know that that's something really important to Nava's mission. And so I want to make sure that I say that because we're autism live, we're going to be talking about it specifically for individuals on the spectrum. But the truth of the matter is, is that you are very inclusive of anyone who has special needs for this program and all the things that you do at the center. And I want to make sure that we, we talk about that. So you've been doing the dating spectrum for a while and Tom came and joined what, like a year ago, Tom? I think he joined in our third semester. We're getting ready to actually start our fourth semester. Very cool. And so, Tom, you you bring something really wonderful and unique um, to this. Tell people a little bit about you and, and how you came to be the amazing person that you are. Well, from a romance and relationship perspective, basically, I was diagnosed with autism when I was 13 years old. And from the time I got diagnosed, I knew I wanted a girlfriend. That was just something that I felt would make me feel whole or that would, it was missing in my life. And I had difficulties interacting with girls, with women. Like I would call them when I was really interested, leave lots of voicemails and almost get myself thrown in jail for that, the calling, calling too much. And also having difficulty socializing. So with the help of my sister, my mother, and several therapists and support team members, I was able to get a little bit of an idea as to what the social game is, so to speak, and what kind of social skills need to be had in order to have and keep a girlfriend. And I have had several relationships with women on and off the autism spectrum, older and younger than me. And I share some of my stories with the participants in the day spectrum and it's really beneficial to them because I've been in their shoes and they need to see and hear it from one of their peers and many of them tend to be men so to hear it from a man as to what they're struggling with what they're going through and I can give them some hope or some suggestions as to how they can be successful on the dating scene absolutely so let's let's talk specifics about because when is this new term you do you call it a semester what are you calling it yeah, so um, we have been so excited about uh, this, the creation of this program that uh, we started. We started almost two years ago, and um, Nava and I created this program together. And uh, I started writing the curriculum based on my own experience. I'm single, um, and also listening to people within the community. All, I, I really did my research and I and Chelsea Darnell um, helped me to really uh, write the curriculum. And after the first semester when we started, uh, I pretty much sort of took everyone's suggestions and thoughts and curiosities and incorporated it into the dating spectrum. So each semester, I'm fine-tuning the curriculum. I'm fine-tuning media that we show during the classes. We're um, really taking all of those uh, questions and experiences into account and then you know, putting it back out there into the community. Like Tom said, everyone has a personalized experience, and it's really important for others to hear about that. So I really call the dating spectrum a conversation about dating and relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, one of the things that I love about it, what I hear, cause again, I don't ever get to come to one of these, but I've heard a lot from lots of people is that, um, the way you go about it is very fun 
and that, you know, we talked about self-regulation before, um, that was our jargon of the day. And, and I love the things that I've heard back are about self-love about, you know, knowing who you are and what you want and what your boundaries are and, and, and then how to be a good friend. So I love that it's not just, um, a, a, you know, a textbook manual for, okay, so here's how you ask somebody out, right? That there's, it's about starting with self, which I think is super duper important. So when does this new term start? What day, how, where are oh. people signing up? Let's talk about those things. So while we were, um, we're working on, uh, the start date, but we, we recently pushed it back because of some, uh, because of Rosh Hashanah, um, we heard from the community and we wanted yes. to accommodate people. So we pushed the start date back to October 4th, which I believe is October 4th, which I believe, or the third, uh, which the is the third Monday. is the Monday. Yeah. Third yeah. Monday, Monday, and, October 3rd. And we're located in Reseda. So we're doing in-person um, classes, which is really helpful because you can feel people's energy in the room. You can, um, it's really been tough and uh, there's been a lot of online burnout, you know, but, um, we love having the, the in-person class. We do mock dating as well. So we do examples, um, where we put people together or Tom and I step in and help with different scenarios that really helps people get a vibe of what it's like. And, um, you know, so we, we're also talking about, like you talked about self-love, we're talking about too, that it's okay if you're not in a relationship, that that doesn't have to be a goal is to find a significant other, that it's all right, you know, for you just to, to, to understand yourself and what your needs are. And, um, you know, so that's been really uh, uh, instrumental in, in discussing with the community. Yeah. And we're showing the flyer right now. Um, I, I love this because it's a social skills experience. It really and, is. and, you know, unfortunately in, you would think with everything that's been going on in this world in the last 20 years and all the strides that we've made in realizing, okay, people on the spectrum might need support with this and might need support with that. And we've, we've done, you know, so many shows on social skills. This still seems to be an area where everybody says we need it. Everybody says we want it, but very few people are offering this, this kind of class. I really can't think of anybody else who's offering this in this way. Now you mentioned that it's in Reseda. For those of you who don't know, Reseda is in California. It's just North of Los Angeles. And you might be like, Oh, well, I don't live in Los Angeles, Shannon. Los Angeles is not the center of the world. I will tell you though, that, um, I think that somewhere down the road that there, there needs to be at Asner centers and more places and this program in more places. And it can, you know, it really can, it has the facility to be franchised. If somebody super wanted to have this in their town, I'm sure that they could reach out to you and that you guys could figure out a way. Am I completely in left field? No, I'm so happy you said that because Tom and I are willing to take our show on the road and, um, we are prepared. Our, our materials are, um, we have wonderful examples, visual examples, we utilize multiple approaches to teaching so that we make it fun and not boring. And, you know, we get in there, we sit, we sit with the students. We, we just have these wonderful experiences. It's an eight week course and um, we're so willing to take our show on the road. Uh, so if there's uh, somebody that is open to having us in their city, we are open to that. Um, and yeah. we can even, you know, do a weekend, maybe a couple weekends where um, we do a Saturday and Sunday and we sort of condense the curriculum into shorter um, to longer timeframes and then, uh, you know, maybe come back and do part two or part three of, there you of go. the dating spectrum. Um, I, I think it's important to say that because, you know, it's very easy to sit someplace and say, why isn't this here? 
and and that's available and you can get down in the mouth about it. But if you really want it, there is a path. Yes, it'll take a little bit of time and energy, but the truth is that time and energy is just reaching out to them and calling them and maybe maybe finding a sponsor. Although, you know, you really, they probably could do it where each participant pays a small amount of money and that that adds up. So it's all doable, you guys. You just got to put yourself out there and say, I want to prioritize this and say, this is something that I need or that my kid needs. Now, what age range do you allow in in the one that you're getting starting in October? Uh, well, this one is 18 and older, um, which seems to really work well for us because we do have some 30 year olds, 35 year olds in the class as well. And so um, we really try to personalize, you know, the, the information to each student's age range and kind of get a feel for it. And we we have a wonderful time. Um, really sharing stories. Uh, Tom has been so great in sharing his own experiences and it really does resonate so much. And he, he kind of, um, he has a way of reaching the students. Um, yeah, that is just so lovely. Well, I mean, you know, Tom, you're a renowned speaker. You, what is your classification as a Toastmaster? It's something amazing. Tell us. Uh, the designation is a Toastmasters accredited speaker. Speaker. These are people that have mastered the art of public speaking and apply it to a particular trade or line of work. And I earned the designation three years ago, and there are currently only 90 Toastmasters accredited speakers in the world. And I'm the only one on record with autism. So that's, there we go. it shows how I, I've really come out of my shell and I'm starting to tell my story and have an impact on people on a personal level. It, yeah. It's so wonderful after class, everyone sticks around and says, uh, you know, little um, things of gratitude or I, uh, that meant so much to me after class or to, to hear Tom speak um, or to get a little experience. We had one student that uh, he was trying to apply for a job and we did mock dating, which is just really conversation. And he was able to take that experience into his in-person interview. And it, he said it helped him out. He was able to like practice with us and then go to his interview and feel comfortable to be able to interview in person. Yeah, if you think about it, it's a very close skill. We're also, I see that Matt Asner is watching. We're welcoming him. One of the things that I particularly love about the way you guys do things, when you have your classes, the caregivers are invited to stay, but go to another room to sit with other caregivers to have fun and refreshments and talk about different things. And that's, I've participated in that a few times and it's super duper fun. Uh, Matt is, Matt Asner is usually in there leading that group and he is more fun than you can know what to do with. Uh, and eventually we always get to talking about movies, which is my favorite thing to talk about with Matt Asner. So uh, thank you for being here, Matt. It's a great, great program. And you mentioned the mixers before. I mean, just stop with the, you guys are, you, nobody does it like you guys do it. And, and you mentioned that Valentine's Day one, like that is so epic in everybody's memory. Can I tell you how much we all talked about that during COVID? I was there dancing. At one point I danced so much and so hard that I became afraid we were going to have to call an ambulance. And I thought, oh no, I don't want to be the person that we have to call the ambulance for. But I, I, I had exerted myself. Shall we I, say. I think it was date night for you and your husband. So there you go. Temple was like giving you cues to like there keep we go. the fire alive. And I, it was like a prom and your husband and you were like, I think you we were dressed up. Yeah. We and danced it out. But the other thing was that eventually my husband got hot and tired and he went and sat outside. And just like at a prom, it was me and a bunch of other women with our purses in the middle dancing around the purses. I'm not naming any names, but Jill Crater Hart, I, you were there with me. Um, and there were several other moms uh, participating. And you know what? We needed that too. But it was so, it was, I always say it was like being at a really good wedding with your kids where everybody's accepted. And so mm -hmm. there were, you know, there were people dancing all over the place. There were people dancing with their kids of all ages. There were couples dancing together on the spectrum, not on the spectrum, caregivers, parents, teenagers, whatever. Everybody was having a really good time. You guys really know how to have a party. Well, I, I mean, will, I, I have to say, say that. that comes from Nava. She is the mastermind behind so much of our stuff. She has really created uh, some really great programs. And out of the dating spectrum, just as a side note, 
um, she felt that there was a need for sex education because one of the topics in the dating, we, we have a different topic over the eight weeks. Um, each week is a different topic. And sex education ended up becoming its own class. And so um, she, she was like, let's get it. Let's make this a prerequisite sometimes to the dating spectrum. And then she just decided that we had a need for 12 to 17 year olds for um, sex ed. And um, Megan and Michelle are co-teachers for this class. And uh, they make it really fun and easy. And they're very comfortable uh, teaching sex ed. And it, they bring this wonderful presence where it, everyone feels really um, comfortable and safe to be able to share. And we have these wonderful uh, classes. Tom, you've been there in, in some of the sex ed classes. I have. I think it's very necessary for our young people to have access to uh, resources and, and that particular conversation because I think there seems to be a little bit of like a stigma or stereotype in the autism community that some people on the autism spectrum, their, their parents or their caregivers might think their child will never have sex. Yeah. And so the, so the talk is never had, but the curiosity and the, ur the urges are still there and they need to be discussed. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, everyone. It's like, you d don't be in denial. Like what a wonderful thing to, you know, dream about that, you know, someday your child could have a very healthy relationship with a very healthy sexual life. Isn't, isn't that what we would all hope for if we really could just be open and honest? Absolutely. I know I mean it gives us the squeamies, but... <laughs> Because you know, we don't want to picture it. Nobody wants to picture it. But ultimately, it's what we want for our kids, right? Be right, happy but, and healthy. And even in 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 the discussion of of sex, uh, you know, there are some people that have voiced that that isn't interesting to them. But at least they're expressing that, and they're making a decision, and they're making a choice based on knowledge. And so we're talking about that, and that's perfectly fine too. If you want companionship but you don't want to have a, an intimate relationship or you don't feel ready to have sex, that's great too. Cause everybody's relationship and dating is individualized. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. There's no peer pressure. A relationship doesn't always include sex and, and that that's fine too. Absolutely. Um, and again, with these other things like the sex ed classes, I would imagine that if somebody wanted one of those in their neck of the woods, that that's also something that could be talked about. So who would people call if they said, okay, I'm not in Los Angeles, I'm not able to get to Reseda, but this is all exactly what I need. Who would they reach out to, Krista? So uh, basically, they, they, for, mental, for uh, the dating spectrum, it'd be great if they wanted to call me, which my number is uh, 855, sorry, 818-855-2199. And then also we have the main number at the Ed Asner Family Center, which I am drawing a blank on, but I think it's on the flyer. Okay. And, and then there's our website, which is teafc.org. Wonderful. You guys can reach out um, to do that. Um, and thank you, Tom, for putting that number in there again, 818-855-2199. Uh, 818-855-2199. To get a hold of Krissa. Now we've been talking about dating and relationships and self love, and I I think it would be remiss of us if we didn't also mention that there uh, studies are showing that there is a higher level of LGBTQ um, members that um, percentage wise on the spectrum than there is in the population that is not on the spectrum. So it would be remiss of us not to talk about that, the, that area, those individuals also need, uh, information about sex ed and about, uh, you know, what it's like to be dating in their community. And I know that you guys have, uh, are very inclusive and you also have, don't, do you still have a group that is just for LGBTQ? We, we did in the past during COVID, we ran an online LGBTQIA plus group and it ran for a good while, but then students went back to school and then it sort of disbanded. And we have opportunity to do that again, but our dating spectrum class and the sex ed is totally inclusive. It's not yeah. separated out. It's for everybody. 
and we we talk about all of the all all of the things that surround it. So again, our our each um, semester is sort of like each student is taken in to consideration. What do they bring to the collective? What you know? How can we tailor it to each student's needs? And so um, anybody that is from the LGBT community or I uh, just whatever they they need in that moment, we will adapt. Which is absolutely amazing. So uh, Tom, uh, what has this been like for you? I imagine when you were a teen, this would have been a lovely thing if you'd had opportunity, but now for you to co-lead it, what's that like for you? Well, I actually feel comfortable telling my stories and sharing examples of where I messed up or where I failed or where I got rejected or, or dumped because there's always something I could take away from each relationship with each woman that I've had over the years. Like for instance, how long before I have to say, this isn't working, like we're growing apart and we're just wasting our time or also to get an idea if a woman might want to just use me for like my stuff or something that I have versus in loving me, me for me. Yes. And, also, and, and also knowing when to say no, because I know people on the autism spectrum want to have friends, girlfriends, so they might say yes to be people pleasers or not rock the boat but that could be very detrimental yeah. to them. So for me to be able to lead that conversation or maybe have an aha moment within the audience, I think that makes it all worthwhile. And I, and we get a lot of laughs sometimes when I share my stories or where I messed up somewhere. And you ever heard that saying, someday we'll look back on this and laugh? I've definitely felt that as I taught my dating life. But not yeah. only are you a good speaker, Tom, you're also somebody that is deeply compassionate and empathetic and kind and that you ooze that you it radiates out of you so i think that it makes uh everybody very comfortable around you to be open so and i mean that only as a compliment i think you know how you operate is very open and compassionate and caring and i and, I, and again i think everybody senses it um, you just have, as, as Chris has said, you just have a way, um, and that's unique to you. Essence, and he has the yeah. best vibes ever. Yeah. You're a good person, Tom. Um, okay. and, we, and we all recognize it. So, you know, it's wonderful in that respect because you know that you're putting yourself in it and putting your, if, if it's your child doing it, or if it's you doing it, you're putting yourself in good hands or putting your child in good hands with a, a licensed marriage and family therapist and somebody who is walking the talk and is deeply compassionate and, and wonderful. So I, I absolutely love this. We want to, you're, you're taking people right now, but there is a class size limit. Is that correct? Yes. We, we want to, I mean, I'm open to having um, 15 to 20 students in the dating spectrum class. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a lot of interest right now, but we do have spots open. We do, um, we have private pay. And then also uh, some of our students were able to get funding from self-determination money. Mm -hmm. And um, so in terms of the younger sex ed 101 class, uh, the 12 to 17 we have a few spots open. That's a much smaller class. We're only uh, open to having five to seven students in that class because uh, we really want it to be personalized and very, um, very connected. And then we also have the 18 and older sex ed class. So we can increase class size a little bit with that one too. Okay. And this is the tough part of the conversation, but you know, people are going to ask this. Is there a, hi, Nicholas, we're saying hello to you. Is there a, a level of functioning that is more beneficial for someone to get the full benefit of the class? Uh, I would, I would say that it's on a per person basis because we certainly want people to be able to self-regulate, uh, and be able to participate um, and not uh, be disruptive for the other students. Um, but then uh, we had other students in the past who have used assistive technology devices, which were wonderful. And um, we were able to help provide them with curriculum in advance, as well as questions, perhaps. We were very mindful of that, and um, the student was able to formulate questions, type them in advance, and be able to fully participate in the, the courses. 
Um, Tom, yeah. do you do you feel the same way? I do. I do. It's very inclusive, and we even if someone can't speak or might use a device to speak, that's not a restriction or a limitation to be part of this class. And we will always make sure that that person and their input are included and fully heard. Yeah, but I think for a lot of things like this that you guys do and other things that we talk about on the show, one of the things that people say often is that, you know, if the person has expressed some interest in the subject, that it's, it's a place that they want to be. I don't think that this is, a, if your child is not, um, you know, expressing a need to understand things um, from this point of view, you know, we're not going to force that. Am I correct? They should want to be there. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes parents are like, oh, I'm signing my kid up for this. I'm signing my kid up for that. And then you call the kid. They're like, what? You know, like, I don't know if yeah, I want to yeah. go to therapy or I don't know if I want to take this class. I'm, I'm not interested in dating, you know, so sometimes, yeah, I mean, yeah. that really needs to be heard. And, now, and Nicholas like, has, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead I was going to say, that, like, like, there is a saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And yeah. And, and I think as, if there are any parents or anyone listening to this who might be finding it difficult to get their kid into a, a class or to describe the benefits, make it about their goals. Make it about the life they want to live. You want to have a girlfriend? This class will help you get a girlfriend. And that might yes. motivate them or help them see, okay, maybe this, this will be all right. So I would Absolutely. definitely make, make, make it about your kid and what they want for themselves. And then you'll have better luck of them participating Amen under their own that. free will. Under the own free we, will. Ask that. we actually asked that in the class. What are your expectations and goals? Not your parents. There's a difference. Yeah. What do you want yeah. for your life? You know? Amen to that. That's important. Now, Nicholas, we, we're almost out of time, but Nicholas has written in and says, I have a question. He says, I want to worry about my college first, but I want to find someone. I want to have a child and, and look up to my father and, uh, and suggestions you have Shannon or your guests. So for, and so, uh, I don't know whether this is somebody about to go to college or just now in college, but amazing. How amazing that that is your goal for yourself right now, Nicholas. But of course you want to find someone. I think that that's, you know, the natural course of things, right? We all want that companionship. I, I mentioned Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Um, so what suggestion, and I, I don't know if this person, obviously, if this person lives in, in Southern California, Nicholas, go to this class, right? This would be a great class for you. Uh, he says he is in college. Wonderful. Congratulations. Uh, but Nicholas, are you in Southern California? Because my assumption is that you're not. Um, so if they're not able to get to your class, uh, cause the big duh is that if they can, this is the best thing, right? But if they can't, what kinds of suggestions would you guys give him? I'll, I'll start by saying, oh, sorry, Chris, you want to go first? No, you go ahead. No, go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, I would say uh, rather than wait, or I should say rather than impose or expect that it has to happen at a given time, sometimes it'll happen when you least expect it. Like I'm currently seeing a woman that I met three and a half years ago at a networking summit in Burbank. So we met in person that day and then we exchanged contact information, kept in touch over the course of three years during the pandemic. And about two and a half months ago, we decided to become a couple. So just, we didn't even know we would meet each other that day. We had no idea we'd be in a relationship now, but over the years, just keeping in touch, staying good friends, and having increasingly intimate and meaningful conversations with one another, do we now have a successful relationship? And her name is Rosetta, and I'm going to be seeing her next week after the Ironman triathlon. She lives in Virginia, so this is a long-distance relationship. But she and I both go to this event not knowing we would be meeting each other and how this has blossomed into what it is today. So, Nicholas, it will come to you when you least expect it. And I want to, on that note, say while you're in college, while you're – able to experiment or kind of see what life has to offer you. I'll leave you with a quote that a professional networker in my hometown of Santa Clarita told me, a gentleman named Ed Bernstein said, magic happens at the party you didn't want to go to. The Amen. Magic, magic, That's where I met my husband. Yeah. So, and, I, and, the, and Rosetta was like, she was not sure about going to that networking event. And I was a little antsy about it at first, but we both go, we meet and now we're dating. Yep. I was invited to a party and I was standing there and I said, I don't want to go. And I said, I feel fat. I don't want to go. And my friend said to me, no, get dressed. This is the kind of party that you go to where you meet your future husband. And I did. So nice. there we go. 
Krista, what right. did you want to say? And by the way, he said that he's in college and he's in Midwest. Midwest, yes. Yes. Uh, basically, not to put pressure on yourself that, you know, college is a, a huge stressor and moving into a dorm if you're away from home, it's a lot of pressure. And, you know, your goals are to get your education. It's okay if you want to just pursue college first and then start to think about having a relationship. Uh, many students do talk about that. There's only so much they could juggle and college is huge to juggle and a relationship is huge because then you get into the, you're not spending enough time with me. Uh, when can I see you? Uh, you know, really juggling that in your schedule too is, is really tough. Like you were just talking about how you still need to make time as a couple for each other and as yes. well as career, family and all those other things. So we yes. do talk about that in the in the class as well, not making your partner 100% your only thing in your life, but to have a balanced life. Yes. And they're asking um, for contact information and you can see right on the screen and you might be listening. I, I don't want to assume because we podcast also, mm -hmm. but Tom Island, um, you can find him at Tom at Tom Island and there's no S in Island. So it's uh, Thomas Island, excuse me, Tom at Thomas Island. So no S in the Island. Um, or you can go to come to life coaching.com and Krista, they can find you at T E A F C.org. Correct. Yes. My, okay. the, all of our info is there. Okay. So now is the time if you or someone, you know, is interested in this, it is ideal to sign up right now to be in this upcoming, any of these upcoming classes. And there isn't just the, the dating spectrum. There are more classes and you should go to teafc.org to find all of those classes. Are they still doing some classes virtually? Not these classes, but other classes, some of the art classes. I think they are. I think Aviva still does her drawing class online. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. Um, we, I, I, we would really have to look at the website to see what's current. Uh, I we know. I'm expecting social... you to know everything and you can't possibly. We have You've a got lot of your social area. media as well, like our Instagram, yeah. our Facebook might be more informational in terms of the other classes, but I know we're gearing up for um, a musical, the Wizard of Oz musical in Los yeah. Angeles. Uh, and also we have so many other upcoming events. We're going to have a community mixer as well. So stay tuned and check out our social media and our website. I also want to say that this year, again, we are partnering with the Ed Asner Family Center for our Sensitive Santa event, which we are, fingers crossed, hoping will be more in person and not the drive up that we did last year. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. So um uh, I did, I did not catch the email. Can you send it to me on Facebook for Tom Island? We, uh, Traven, do we have the ability to put Tom's and Tom, are you okay? If we put your email on Facebook, is that all right for you? You may. All right. There it is. There we go. Traven just did it because he's that good. Uh, all right, you guys, we're way out of time now, even though we started late, we we've done our, uh, all that we can. Uh, but, um, just amazing work that you guys are both doing. Tom, I wish you big luck on this Ironman triathlon. We're going to be watching social media to see how it goes for you this time. Please take care of yourself though, right? Because I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's been so beastly hot here. I can't even imagine getting up off the couch is more than I can manage right now. Uh, so, and Krista, thank you for all the good work that you guys are doing. We're going to look thank forward you. to hearing more about it. Again, T E A C com. Did I get it wrong? It's basically the Ed Asner Family Center.org. So T E A F C.org. But Shannon, I just wanted to say thank you so much. You are the heart and soul of this community uh, across the United States, internationally, whatever. You have such passion and you have such a beautiful soul. I, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm so happy to know you. And oh, to Tom, I'm so excited for the future for what we're creating it's really lovely to be working with you well thank you i appreciate that let me just say as we leave that tomorrow for the first time we're starting a new show here on the mm -hmm. autism network because you know we do let's talk we do let's talk autism with nancy uh all spot jackson we do let's talk movies with Mo moira gia mateo and now starting tomorrow 
once a month, we're doing Let's Talk All the Things. And my co-host will be the amazing Rachel Bird, mom to Kobe Bird. She is a panic and a half. She makes me laugh so hard that I can't breathe. She is Martha Stewart in a different dress. She is a crafter and makes the most amazing gluten-free recipes. And But she also is hilarious. So I uh, can't wait. It happens to be my 60th birthday tomorrow. So oh. make sure you tune in to watch me and Rachel laugh ourselves into outer oblivion. I, I guarantee she's got a quiche recipe, recipe that is gluten-free, casein-free, vegan. Uh, no, I'm sorry. You can't be vegan and have eggs. It's a vegetarian. Uh, so there we go. That And thus starts the hilarity. And I watched the video that she made. Wait till you see what she pulls out of her refrigerator. You're not going to believe it. I laughed so hard last night. I almost coughed up a lung. Um, so that's all tomorrow. Uh, you won't want to miss that. And don't forget on Friday, now it's stories from the spectrum. So if you haven't watched that, you really need to be watching that. But thank you, Tom and Krissa for being with us. And thank you for all the amazing work you do. We'll see you guys tomorrow when I'm in my 60s. Until then, give your kiddo a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy thank birthday. You. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.